This is Project EAT. That's EAT for E-Class All-Terrain. It's a modified Merc built by the Top Gear magazine team for finding bears in the woods. Not many bears around here, though. Mostly badgers. Still, there's definitely some terrain. Lots of it. All you need is a good sense of direction. Or not. Here's Stig again, looking lost. Terrified of maps, apparently. Inner compass points directly south. The EAT has a silky smooth V6 diesel. It'll do 155 miles an hour on the road, but where we're going, we won't need roads. First up, it's a trip to the top of Glen Rannoch, by any means necessary, and against the clock, naturally. But don't worry, it has knobbly tyres, and a roof rack for carrying extra knobbly tyres. In 400 metres, turn left. Turn left. It's a four-wheel drive car on mud tyres, completely sideways. You'd do well in rallying with skills like that. Top draw drifting, I reckon. Who says you need an SUV to go off-road? The EAT has four-wheel drive and air suspension to smooth out lumps and bumps and everyday obstacles. Ancient burial mounds, for example. That's some proper hang time. Actual air suspension. Well, it is a Mercedes wagon, so it's tough. And if you really want to smash stuff up, there's even a pickaxe in the back. Turn left. In 200 metres, turn right. Forty horsepower, more torque than a cruise ship, and gets to 60 miles an hour in just over five seconds. Now it's time to head way over there to the very top of Arthur's seat. But first, what goes up must come down. In 400 metres, turn around when it is safe to do so. Home comforts the EAT, charges for almost anything you can charge, cosy ambient lighting, even a portable espresso machine, everything the intrepid explorer could ever need. At the roundabout, take the first exit. In 400 meters, Turn right. Turn right. All right, all this adventure kit's had a tiny effect on the fuel efficiency. Good job the roof rack holds two cans of diesel, and there's another one in the back. Just don't confuse them with your drinking water.
At the roundabout, take the first exit. In 200 meters, turn left. On to the final stretch now. Just a small matter of getting up Arthur's seat. The clock's ticking, so better step on it, Stiggy. Recalculating route. In 100 meters, turn left. And there we go, the top of Arthur's seat. No idea who Arthur is, by the way, or why his seat's so big. Nice view, though. Shame there's no time to stick around.